All right, then let's head up north to Egypt. The country's biggest privately owned commercial bank, CIB, has wrapped up its first acquisition in sub-Saharan Africa. Mayfair Bank in Kenya was acquired in two stages. The first, with the 51% stake being bought in May 2020. The remainder was bought in January 2023. Now, CIB, comparatively speaking, is a banking juggernaut. It's got listings in Egypt and it's in London. By in September, it had an asset base of close to $20 billion, most of which is focused on its core banking business. The company reported over $400 million in net earnings for the nine months ending in September last year. On paper, Mayfair is a pretty small player in Kenya's bank sector, the smallest actually, with just about five branches and a market share of just over a quarter of a percent by December 2022. So why was it the ideal target for CIB in its entry into East Africa? I put that question to Mars ago to the CEO and Managing Director of CIB, Hussein Abaza. It's a very good question actually. That's the question I've been asked by my board and by investors several hundred times. So let, let me try and, and explain. Um, why Kenya? Because I think uh, Egypt has been witnessing more and more economic integration into the rest of Africa over the past eight to 10 years. And um, definitely East Africa is, because of proximity, because of language, is a much more natural starting point for us, um, as opposed to the West African giants. So we, we looked at East Africa as the starting point. There are a lot of small to mid-sized companies wanting to start doing business with East Africa, exporting into East Africa. In addition, Egypt, for example, is the second largest importer of Kenyan tea in the world. So th there is the natural uh, sort of trade route that has started to emerge. And Kenya for us is the hub for East Africa because of Mombasa and the efficiency there. Um, as, as you know, Kenya exports to Uganda. There's also the potential for Rwanda, Burundi and uh, Tanzania. So for us, Kenya seemed like the, the perfect starting point with, with the financial sector there. Why Mayfair? Because we initially wanted to start as a, as a niche trade player. So rather than going and, and you know, spending a massive amount of money on, on a huge um, acquisition, we wanted a young, small bank where we could basically have, again, a niche um, in the market. So that was the rationale behind looking for the youngest and smallest, cleanest bank we could find. And Kenya sort, and sort of Mayfair ticked all, all the right boxes for us. Uh, it had only been um, around for two, three years, no legacy issues. Um, it was very small, so you know, four or five branches, just over 100 employees. So you, you, you don't have the onerous sort of acquisition problems where, you, you know, you've got completely different things that you need to take care of. It, it's, it's small, it's digestible. In addition, the, the existing shareholders or the founding shareholders of, of, of Mayfair Bank were a group of people we felt um, we could very easily work with. And, um, and it turned out to be um, a, a very good choice, I think. Indeed. Um, moving forward, now that the acquisition has essentially been done, um, when you say you, you want to focus Mayfair CIB, uh, assuming you might eventually rebrand it to CIB, when you say you want to focus it on a specific niche, is, is that going to be trade finance specifically or is it going to be another part of the, 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 the lending market? No, it, we initially started with, with that niche. Now we're, we're going to expand further to, to bring in a lot more digital products uh, looking at it. Now it's become sort of CIB Kenya, if, if, you, if you will. And now we were looking more towards not just the trade products, we're looking also to, to expand our digital footprint. Um, because, you know, given uh, the regulations in Kenya where cloud-based and, and uh, all of that stuff, I think from, from the retail perspective, we want to very much work on the digital um, advantages that, that Kenya offers. And we want to start looking at SMEs and corporates on the asset and lending side. So in a sense, it's gone beyond the initial um, sort of idea where it was simply a trade finance bank into a full, full-fledged digital slash bricks and mortar hybrid. Um, with respect to, to, to capital, to get those goals, to achieve those goals, can you give me any sense of how much capital you're going to be sinking into the business over what timelines to achieve those targets? We, we still are looking at various um, sort of scenarios, but definitely 
um, all of them warrant different levels of capital increase over the coming period. So definitely over the next 18 months, we will be sinking um, a, a, a certain amount of capital. We still haven't gotten the final timeline, so it'll be slightly difficult to commit to certain numbers now. All right, then. Fair enough. I, I also know CIB has a representative office, I believe, in, in Ethiopia, one of the large you know, countries in the region, one of the last markets, if you will, that's still closed off um, to foreign capital. Where does Ethiopia fit in to, to the wider East African play? Again, you, it, 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 it fits in perfectly with, with, with the entire East. As I said, um, Kenya will sort of take care of the neighboring countries. Ethiopia, we're looking because it's still opening up its its markets to foreign banks. So having first mover advantage, I think, will be great. So th that will be a completely different proposition as things settle down. Then again, we're looking at um, a, a full fledged bank there. Indeed. Um, dollar access problems. I know those are issues that we're facing both both in Egypt and also here in Kenya, but you know, to, to varying degrees and because of um, various different reasons as well. Do you think that might be an inhibitor to, to the growth of the business here in Kenya? If, if so, it's only a temporary issue because both Egypt and Kenya have gone through these sort of dollar squeezes, but they're usually temporary. This time they're a result of you know the global pandemic, um, the Russia-Ukraine crisis, but it, it, these things always recover. And if you're looking at the trade routes, then you, you tend to work with dollar generators from both countries.